Father, we thank you for the joy of your presence. Thank you for bringing us from darkness to your marvelous light. Thank you for your name, the excellent name, excellent ministry, excellent high priest that you are to us, Lord. Thank you for being an excellent Father, excellent God. Blessed be your name, Father. We honor your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we take hold of your word this morning, Amen. thank you because we will receive wisdom, Amen. clear cut direction. Amen. Somebody will have, have clear cut answer Amen. for the things that have been troubling them Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Clear cut direction in the name of Jesus. We thank for instruction in righteousness eh, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished, lacking nothing. Amen. And we give you praise and we honor your holy name today. Thank for the anointing to teach and to preach, the grace to comprehend and the power to do in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank for our nation Nigeria because things are turning around to the glory of your name. Blessed be your name, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus we are praying. Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory. Before you take your seat, give your neighbor warm letter that we are really happy to see them. Comment there. Look at something nice they are wearing. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God bless you. ROG, thank you. So many new faces. I used to know all of you, but now I don't know all of you again. So many. Sarah. Jirani. Olopa. Hallelujah. So yeah, I said everything. Yay. Bomali. Why not? Ah. Coyote. I, that's what I call him. He looks like my nephew. I know, his, I know his name is Treasure. All of you. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Okay, just a little title. Write it. Yeah, write, just write it. Mm. Just say, Destiny Made Easy. Write that up. Yeah. Destiny Made Easy. I don't, have, I don't know how to try too, too much. Destiny Made Easy. And you should write. You must write. When you come to this church, you must write. You come with paper, not your phone that when it's missing, everything is missing. No, come to church with Jota, paper, and Bible, and write. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. I'll just quickly share some things with you, just a little. And then we move on and trust God for the rest of the week. Glory be to God. Okay, open your Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter number 23. I will read from verse 25 to 29. Is that all right? So you shall serve the Lord your God. How many of you know that is the ultimate of man? You walk with God, you serve him. Hallelujah. We say that's the whole essence of God. Living your life in a way that is productive for the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. And I want to encourage you, everybody here, don't be discouraged. Things happen in the journey of life that I want to make you say, I don't want to serve God anymore. Don't let that be your portion. Because that is it. If you stop serving God, then Satan will have achieved his aim. God, that was what he set out to do, to stop you. Hallelujah. Then look at what he says. So, shall you serve? There are so much noise in the background. Okay, let's go. He said, I've come with my wallet again. He said, I can't hear anything. Because you hear loud music. So, even you are blocked. Some of your ear is messed up. You can't hear anything. Anyway. You know, if your music is not loud, you can't understand. That's all you hear, you know. It's too loud. So you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. 
I mean, you want to say water? <laughs> Where do you think you are? Me, I've told you, I will still leave you. You say water there. <laughs> it will bless your bread and your world. Your, ble- your bread and your world. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Say amen to that. Amen. May the Lord bless your bread and your water. Amen. May sickness be far from you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. You will enjoy the work of your hand. You will live long, you will live well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness will not knock you out of life. Sickness will not knock you out of existence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you are aware of it or you are not aware of it. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That is in you. The same spirit will nullify, eradicate every sickness in your body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. How many of you know you cannot, you cannot be careful enough? Fitness could be from man, but health is from God. Health is from God. Health is not from food, it's from God. Hallelujah. Happy to see you. Hallelujah. He says, So shall you serve the Lord your God. He will bless, please be seated. He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Go on. No one shall suffer miscarriage. Say amen to that. Or be barren in your land. Say amen to that. I will fulfill what? The number of your days. Hey. Now, it says, where am I keeping you in health? Because there's an assignment. There's a destiny. That's why I titled the word steps to destiny. Look at what it says now. He said, now, in the next line, I will send what? The, my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. They will flee before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you, sometimes, sometimes you go to some places and some people just become very, very agitated, walked up. And you are wondering, I've never met you before. Why are you walked up? What is the matter? There's a spirit in you. There's a power you carry. The greater one that lives in you. They cannot live with that. Some people will be nasty to you. You are wondering, you don't know me. Why are you nasty to me? There's a spirit in you that they are afraid of. I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all, you, all the people to whom you come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs towards you or to you. Look at the next line. Hey, hey. I will send hornets, bees before you. Which shall drive out what? The Hevites, whoever they are. The Canaanites. The Hittites from before you. Anyone that wants to stand in a position to get you to where you are going, may the Lord drive them before you. May the Lord drive them away from you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And please let me say this to every one of you. I'm begging you in the name of Jesus Christ. Never get angry when somebody leaves you. Never. You may say that, Pastor, I don't know what I did. I've been nice to him. I've been nice to her. I don't know. He just left. She just left. She just abandoned me. That's not everything. It could be God that is driving them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is somebody hearing me today? Yes, sir. Now, this is not a general statement. It's a specific statement. Because people could believe you because we are nasty. No, no, no. I know. I know. You want me to tell you that everything is their fault. Everything may not be their fault. You could just be a very nasty, badly brought up fellow. Yeah. You could just be badly brought up. That you don't even know what you are doing is bad. You talk back you don't have no respect for it. That's nothing. Say, me, I say my own mind. What kind of dirty mind are you saying? <laughs> you could just be a nasty fellow. You need a touch of God. Your tongue may need a touch of coal of fire. Because some of the things you say to people, you need to weigh it to yourself. Just be nasty. I know people are nasty. You fight as if there's no tomorrow. That's how you, some of you fight. But yeah. See, temperature is going down in church now. 
Because I'm telling the truth. You, you know, somebody offends you, you will pick off your phone. You will text lines after lines of insult and abuses. At no point will you repent. That guy, this is where the type is too so much. You don't know once it goes out of your mouth, you cannot withdraw it. Once you send it, it's, it's on record. You will send that you will abuse the daylight out of them. Because according to you, you cannot allow them to have the last say. You win the battle of words, but you lose the battle of life. You started out with 10 friends. Right now, there's nobody with you. Nasty fellow. I'm just saying it. All these people who are deceiving you that you are praying, prayer, uh, prophecy, it will not change anything. God, the ultimate change is you. Because when a man's way pleases the Lord, it will make his enemies to be at peace with it. Most of the enemies you have, they are self-created. You don't greet people. You insult your mother-in-law. You now say the family gang against you. Why can you support somebody this morning and they will not gang against you? If your mother-in-law comes to visit you, whatever she does is correct. Hey, yeah, yeah. Whatever she does. Listen to me. Let her put plastic on fire. It is correct. <laughs> see them? Say you see now. Mr. Maybe you see them? Nobody's answering me. Because after all, it's my house. Which house? Which useless house? You have forgotten that if, didn't give, if she didn't give back to him, you have no house. Yeah. Always go back to the origin before you make just, ju- judgment. Yes, sir. If you are going to slap a child, find out who is his father. Mm. So you don't go and slap the one way past you. <laughs> before you take action, go back to the origin. Where is this person coming from? Why now? Why are you looking quite quiet? What am I saying that is not registering? Thank you, my sister, for supporting me. May God bless you. <laughs> the, the guy in bones. I hope you are hearing the word of God. Though. There's no post in the kingdom of God. Though. Just be yourself and let God help you. Hallelujah. Because I don't have somebody who will come before God and post for God. For who? God. <laughs> God. <laughs> He himself will laugh at you. Say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Never confront your mother-in-law. Whatever she does, or your father-in-law, write it down. When the son comes back, report. Let, they will forget whatever, and forgive whatever their son says. They will never forget what you say. Yeah. Why will he forget what, and forgive whatever he says? After all, she is the one that packed his poo what else will she do or will he do that's worse than the people she has packed? You get what I'm trying to say? She has seen the worst of her son and the best of her son. Nothing can surprise her. Let him confront her on your, be- on your behalf. You will hear me. Don't forget my lesson, 10 lessons in 10 years. The more diplomatic you are, the less will be your walls. Anyway. Hallelujah. I believe that somebody got something there today. Let's go. I will, drive, I, will drive, I will send honest before you. I will drive out all the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. Look at the next line. Hey, hey! This is where I'm going. I will not drive them out from before you in one year. Oh God, hey, God, oh, turn around, turn around, turn around, Father, breakthrough. I will not do it in one year. I want to become a billionaire. Oh God, God of your people. Oh God, make me, put me there. You will not become it in one year. You know why? The people we are talking about didn't become it in one year. Yes, sir. I will not drive them before you walk in one year. You are the one that's in a hurry. God is not in a hurry. I will not drive them out. I know some of you are not happy. But I am not. Me too. I am ready for you today. Because what I came to preach to you, I know it's not the small, small word. I will not drive out before you one year. Look at what it says. 
lest the land become what? Desolate. And the beast of the field become too numerous for you. All this is called sudden breakthrough. And then the land becomes desolate. Don't you know the animals will multiply against you? Uh, somebody say, Pastor T, what is the beast that will multiply against you? Remember, uh, well, just imagine some of you that are rich and have money and well positioned in life. Just imagine you have that breakthrough when you are 21. You have, you have died. Because what you'll be doing, the beast will multiply against you. Number one, pride is one of the beasts that will multiply against you. I'm not going to talk to you like that. If I let you know who I am, you will not like yourself. Look at him. I'm not talking to him. He's still sitting there. The beast has multiplied against you. You thought you are running people there. The beast is multiplied against you. Are you hearing me? Oh, yeah. You are looking at me. Girlfriend in Paris, another one in Germany. Hey, are you hearing me? One in Wuse, another one in Lokogoma. You hearing me? The beast has multiplied against you. Since you got money, now that every Sunday is your flight. My wife, it will so go off. The battery is uh, the beast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I should use this one. You don't need to preach very well. So I can, one hand will be. In, okay, but I will see. You cannot stop me. All of you. Are you hearing me? Now that you go to club, you before oh, you, you when, when when they go party, in the back you they sit. Right now, when you go to party, you you shake everywhere. Oh, you go there with bundles. Say, carry follow me. Nobody know you before you go. Just he said, be singing, be praise me. Tunde, 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 baby. Hey, are you hearing? You know what has happened to you? The beast has multiplied against you. It, it is better for you to have gone through the process, matured, strong, wise, before you break through. Because at that time, the land will not be desolate. You are powerful enough to occupy everywhere. He says, if you get this thing done so quickly the way you want it, the beast will multiply against you. Why is it that when men break through in ministry too early, by the time they are 40, they begin to go about one stupid doctrine? That's the way they will begin doctrine that Jesus Christ is African. Whether it's European or, or from what's the local government, what difference does it make? That's where they will start doctrine about who's tithing, who's not tithing, uh, to confessing uh, your, uh, Jesus Christ as Lord is not necessary for you to be saved. I remember again, America in those days, he had such a tremendous breakthrough. He had a church in Tulsa. Go and check him out. I don't want to mention his name. Look, by the time he was, in, he was 30, he used to come to Nigeria. As, as 20, he used to come to Benin to come and see um, Archbishop. In, in 20s, he used to, he would pack out uh, Tulsa Convention Center. Thousands. Gifted. He could sing, he could preach, everything. Then he started that everybody is saved. That nobody will go to hell. So, if everybody is saved, why did Jesus come? Because sometimes when you break through, through too early, the beast will multiply against you. Nobody can talk to you anymore. Nobody can correct you. The beast has multiplied against you. You will deny your family members. Nobody can come. You say, your mother will come. Why did you tell me you were coming? You say, sure. You. you. say, you know, I'm busy. I got a plan. I'm not like you. You, have, you guys don't have any plan. <laughs> you are laughing. The beast has multiplied against you. Is somebody hearing me this morning right now? 
So some of you need to kneel down and be thanking God for the delay you are going through. Because that delay is preparing you for where you are going. You that didn't know how wine tasted. Right now, champagne is what you use to brush mouth. Say, no, I need to wake up. You know, just, um, it does something to me. The beast has multiplied against you. Before, when you see tea and bread without egg, you will thank God. But right now, see how you are living. Why is everybody quiet this morning? What have I said now? The beast. <laughs> it's true now, man of God. You, you cannot deny this, remember. Some men of God that we know. Now, when they are going, young people that were struggling in those days, now they are going with three cars in front, three in the back, and then protocol. Like somebody told me, Pastor, can you be going around town without gun, without police guiding you? I said, Who did I offend? <laughs> what is the problem? If we need to go somewhere with security, we go with security, but not that every day in your neighborhood they be shooting. What is the problem? A man of God. The beast has multiplied against so many people. And they don't know that beast has multiplied against them. Are you hearing me? I know a particular man of God. If you greet him, he doesn't answer. I'm not joking. If I mention his name, all of you know him. Don't, don't, don't try me, oh. All of you have come here then. I've been saying, ooh, ooh. You greet him, you just say, mm. That's as if he does, mm. You all look like, I, 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 I pass. I say, hey, hey. The beast has multiplied against this man. See, when you guys had nothing, see how sweet your home was. You and your wife will sit down, you will share your food with joy, you will pray. Now that prosperity has come, you don't stay at home anymore. Hey, the beast has multiplied against you. Am I making sense to anybody here this morning? It, God said, God said, I, don't, I won't do it in one year. Let the beast multiply against you. So let the beast become too numerous for you. And I want to finish this message today. But I don't think I will finish. Don't worry. So that I don't come, come today and say, Pastor T has come, we close at one. That's how you know I'm back. Hallelujah. And in case you think this is a joke, go again to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7. So we are praying, we are praying. Some, you know some of you, when you have that early breakthrough, you think that you know how to do it. No longer depend on God that I can do it anywhere. No, it is God. May the peace not multiply against you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why is it that those who, who broke through early die broke? Because the beast multiply against them. I can't see anybody that broke through at 50 something or something. Who because, you have gone through too much. That it will take Satan and you cooperating with Satan for you to go back. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah. Chapter 7. Go, 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 go to verse 21. Look what it says. You shall not be terrified of them. For the Lord your God, the great God and awesome God, talking about going to the promised land, is among you. Uh, uh, is great, uh, great and awesome God and is among you. Tell your neighbor, my God, is great. And my God is awesome. Hallelujah. 22. And the Lord your God will drive out those nations from before you. What? Before you were how? 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 Little by little. I'm talking about the process of destiny. Tell your neighbor, it will not happen in one year. It will happen little by little. But tell them, no matter how it is happening, something is happening. Hallelujah. That's how God operates. You know why? Because God is more interested in you than what you have or what you become. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. How? Little by little. 
Look at what he says. You will be unable to destroy them at once. Lest the beast of the feet become all too numerous for you. There is nothing called one time breakthrough. It doesn't happen. One breakthrough leads to another breakthrough. God always does what he does for you little by little. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I may not be where I am supposed to be, but I have left where I was. Hallelujah. We have left. We may not be there yet, but we have left. The journey may not be as fast as we expect, but we are getting there. Little by little. You are better off than somebody that ran and broke down in the road. Steady, slow progress. You will get there. Say amen to that. Amen. Little by little. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Verse 26. Glory be to God forevermore. Look at what he says. He was telling them the process of the, how the kingdom of God works. Jesus Christ. Look at what he said them, to them. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should what? Scatter seed on the ground. Next line. And should sleep by night. And rise by day. And the seed should what? Sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. Lord, for the earth yields crops by itself. What? First the blade. That great thing that comes out. First the blade. Then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. Tell your neighbor little by little. By. Mm, I've seen some hundred million the blade. Three hundred million the blade. You are not having the full corn in the head yet. Are you hearing? Why is everybody quiet? Little by, is that little by little, are you hearing me? Yeah, you got a break to a good job. Are you, that is the blade. You, you, why? Have you seen any farmer before that complains when the blade, small blade, comes out? No. He knows that that blade will come before the full corn. Why is that? When you get a small job, all you do is complain. This is not the kind of job I want. What, what I'm targeting is the, is the MD CEO of Nigeria Aluminum Plastic Company. Look. <laughs> you have started again. Why are you not grateful for the blade? Then you become a storm and the head, and then the full head, the full corn in the head. Say amen to that. Amen. Little by little. That's how the kingdom of God. Say the kingdom of God is like this. As if a man should scatter seed. Take a look at your life. Now you used to be a champion of 20 naira. No matter how pastor preach. The Lord will multiply your seed. The Lord will embark your seed. The Lord will approach your seed. No matter what he says, 29. Know that you are a bad person. That was all you could afford. But right now, look at your offering. Look at what God has done. You used to quarrel like me. I used to quarrel when my friend drank Coke. I said, remember Biodo? We used to fight over Coke. Biodo, are you mad? We have 1,000 naira. We bought food. 300 naira. We are planning that the remaining will be for evening. Now you are drinking Coke. Now you are shutting our for the evening. He said, Babati, eat in my coke. That is, if I don't drink Coke, I will vomit. I said, You have eaten your I said, In the night, you have eaten your own food. That you have drank your own food for the night. We were quarreling over Coke. But right now, if I'm quarreling, are you hearing me? See what God has done little by little. <laughs> Scotting. I told you how I scotted. But please don't die. The journey continues. Little by little. God himself said, I will not drive them up away from you at once. Little by little. A lot of Nigerians believe in miracle. God does more of healing than miracle. Healing is a process. Miracle is at once. And sometimes in a lifetime, you may only receive miracle one in a lifetime. Wow. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about right now? Little by little. All of you who are on the journey of losing weight, don't be discouraged. <laughs> if you are too drastic, the weight will come back. 
Do it what? Little by little. Stop eating 10 slices of bread. Go back. You get it from 10. Begin to drink 8. Uh, eat 8. Uh, all of you know, hey, hey, you know that all those New Year resolutions. That's why you, you break down by, by March. I will never drink beer again. Reduce the content. Just reduce the amount first. Then you will not drink again in January. It's like you want to die. Then by February, say, God, God, God is not that wicked. <laughs> Please, let me just do one lager. Are you hearing? <laughs> now you are back again. Take it to two cartons. Because you are not doing it well, little by. How can you want to pray for four hours? You have never prayed for 40 minutes. That's why you think the things of God are hard. You are not doing it what little by. I told everybody, begin to read one chapter a day. If I tell you right now, I read a chapter a day, it's a disgrace on me. I, am a, I cannot be reading one chapter a day. But for you, one chapter a day is okay for you. Start by praying. You cannot pray three hours. Start by praying 15 minutes. When you have mastered it, go to 20 minutes, to 30 minutes. Are you hearing me? Little by little, you will get there. I know when you are born now. You are my sister's second child. Baby! See them right now. But Mali everywhere, everywhere grows. See, see a everywhere. But if you born a child and started walking in the, in the first day, would you run away? You are still like, you take off. You still will take off. You hear me? <laughs> but how do they happen? They grow up little by. You know, sometimes I was telling some people yesterday, even those who live with, that, with those children don't know that they are growing. It's outside that I will say, ah, you don't grow tall, no. you are grown tall, no. are you hearing me? You may not know that you are growing. We that are looking at you will know that you are growing. Something is happening in your life, little by little. You may not appreciate God in your life, but other people are looking at you and say, if I can have what he has. I know why you don't, you don't say any big D. It's a big D. Because you are in it, you don't know you are fast. Like my friend came here one day, he said, Pastor T, God has blessed you. I will say, oh, we praise God. He said, I know you will say that. He said, those who are inside the plane don't know that the plane is fast. He said, those who are inside the plane don't know that the plane is fast. Glory be to God forevermore. Little by little. Glory be to God forevermore. Do you know the problem, problem of, the, of the prodigal son? Prodigal child? You know his problem? You don't know the problem? Let me show you his problem today. You know that he demanded, you know, you must stop it. That's not the problem. Let me show you his problem today. Go to Luke chapter 15. Maybe I will round up on that today. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be discouraged. You want, ah, Kai. Next week, look. You know what? Let me run. Let, I will not go too far today. You will come back next week. I want to break it down for you. Because faith has process. Hey, I want to do this. I want, to, I want all the money before I start. What, what, what's wrong with you? Where do you learn that from? What do you learn that from? What do you learn that from? Don't you understand how faith works and how God works? You would think that God is not doing something. That's why you are blowing your seed and wasting your seed. Because you don't know it's part of the little supply that God brings. That when you add them together, it will get to where you are going. Are you hearing me? Little by little. You say flood. Flood. Come and say flood. You think flood just came? The rain just started coming. Little by little. Little by little. Glory be to God forevermore. Let me just show you this and then we'll end up for today. But I hope you got something today, right? Uh, Pastor T, when I get my three bedroom, I'm going to put over there, you know, um, you know a, a pipe organ because I like music in the house so that, like an orchestra, like an orchestra, it will just be going. At the back there, at the back there, I'm going to put a little swimming pool in the three bedroom. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Guys, why don't you start light, life little by little? Some of you guess you are not married because you don't understand this principle. You are looking for a man who has all the cars. Don't you know if he has all the cars, all the houses, you are just another acquisition? Thank you, my sister. Honestly, you don't know you are just an. Can't you just join hand with a brother? 
whereby you take the steps little by little. There's nothing wrong in starting small. Bible actually says, though your beginning be small, your latter end shall greatly increase. It didn't tell you when. It just tells you as you do it little by little. So why are you discouraged? Why are you complaining? Why? You are scotting, now you are paying your own rent. You said it's one bedroom, but you are not scotting, no. It's your own one bedroom, your own bed. Tell your neighbor, say little by little. Little. Little by little. Hallelujah. Remember now how we met. Haba. I was living in church office because I've been a church boy all my life. He was living across in the gate house. I didn't want to say because I don't know how you would take it. <laughs> That's why I said he's living across. But he was living in the gate house. I didn't want to say it so that you won't say hey. But thank God he said it. It was why he was in the gate house that he was trying to connect the wire that he used mouth to, to tear the wire. He didn't know that the wire was connected. He just saw fire. Anyway, that's another story another day. We had no car, but we were happy. We used to take taxis together to church, remember? We used to take taxis together, take taxis together to church. One day we got to our church. The church was not there. They have moved. <laughs> But see what God has done. Little by little. Hallelujah. I said, I told you I want to read this one scripture for you. Luke 15, the prodigal guy. Okay, let's start from verse 9 or 10. Anywhere you see, just open. Okay, Kai, I'll come to this next week. This is beautiful. I won't come to this verse now. I will show you something about this verse now next week. But let's go to verse 10. Likewise, I said to you, there's joy in heaven and everything. Go to verse 11. Okay. And he said, because, you know, the, the Luke chapter 15 is the story of lost and found. A man that lost one sheep. The woman that lost a coin. The man that lost his son. You remember that story? Like that. So, and he said, a certain man had two sons. Next verse. And the younger of them said to his father, Dad, give me the portion of the goods that fall to me. So he divided to them his what? His livelihood. Go on. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possession on prodigal living. The beast multiplied against him. Look at that. Yeah. Next, next line. Uh, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. The beast multiplied against him. So far, he began. Then he went and joined himself to the city of that, of that, of that country. And he sent him to war to his feet, to war to feed what? Swine. My God. A Jew feeding a swine. The beasts have multiplied against him. May the beast not multiply against you. No, no, you didn't hear that prayer very well. I said, may the beast not multiply against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go back to verse 12. Or go back to verse 11. And give me that in uh, in New Living Translation or message. Anyone you see, I'll read. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. This is NLT. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate. What? Now! Nah! Before I die. That is the problem. He doesn't want to. The man is not refusing not to give him. But can you take this, your share, little by little? He said, what? I want it, what? Now. Nah. The more desperate you are, the more you are open to deception. I want it now. I want it. That is the language. That's what got the boy into trouble. 
the now lifestyle. Being promoted on Facebook, your friend posting before a car that is not their own, and whetting your appetite, and having a wrong expectation. And everything everybody does these days, have we forgotten the scripture that says, what your right, left hand, right hand does, you should not let your left hand know. But these days, we we'll go on social media, see pastor, just, he just blessed choir leader with a car. He just everywhere, everything, trending. You know what? Because you want the praise of men. More than the Bible says, that is all you will ever get. And we are provoking, and everybody's being provoked. Everybody's being provoked. You want to, no, no, it doesn't work like that. Glory be to God forevermore. Who? Give it to me now. I know you want to get married. Can you please watch that guy for six months, eight months? Fall in love little by little. Don't fall in love, bam. I am not playing. Remember I said this so during my last something. Because human beings were in three parts. What you said, love, you are in love with the body. What you saw was the shape. You saw everything, you say, wow, I am in love. You are very stupid. What love is that? You saw exterior and posterior, you said you are in love. Have you spoken to her? You saw his chest, you said, wow, this guy is good. What you saw was just bare chest. It was a physical. Man is three parts. Have you listened to his soul? To see whether you can live with him? How does he reason? What are his value systems? That's another stage of falling in love. Let the body attract you, but don't fall in love with the body. You know why? Because the body will eventually change. How does he think? How does he spend? How does she spend? Is she wasteful? Some of you, you make money, but your wife is very wasteful. Some of you, you are, you are making money, you are bad, but the man cannot account for money. Very silly guy. Every time he goes around looking for a prophet to pray for him, who tells you that devil steals money? Devil will just show up and say, oh, I came to steal money. Where can I the Bible says, though he's a thief, he doesn't steal your money. If you want to see where your money went, take biro and paper and write. You will see where it went. That day you went to nightclub, your beer alone and your drink alone was 1.2 million. That's where it went. Are you hearing me? That time that you have nothing to do in Lagos, but you carry your three friends. They said, let's go and parry. Write it down. That was where the money went. Now, the third one, check your phone. Are you hearing me? Oh, those who are demanding money from you. Say, I don't want them to feel bad because if I don't say them, they'll be angry with me. Look, don't forget, where were you before? Are you their God? Who made you their Jehovah Jireh? Why are you fooling yourself? Without you, they will leave. Some of you, you give out of your ego. All these people you are sending money to, go and share some of their phones. You know what they are doing is fine, Barra. Because as they are calling you, they are calling others. If you don't win people off your money, when I say win, I mean W-E-A-N. If you don't win their dependence on you, don't let God strike you. You know why? Because you are replacing God. And God is a jealous God. Never take anybody's attention away from God and put it on you. Are you hearing me? If you know that somebody is always looking towards you, deliberately, deliberately block them. Deliberately see your heart. Let them learn to trust God. Some people, you don't know something about human beings that you never, some of you never realize. You will do 99 things for them when you don't do one. One. That one. You have become a bad person. Now, all you are doing, you are not frustrated. You are angry. Why? Because you are doing it for your flesh before. Do it as unto the Lord. Kai, did I get anybody here this morning? <laughs> Glory be to God forever, man. This side, I'm not coming back here again. I've done everything here. Let me go to that side. Glory be to God forever, man. Hallelujah. Did you get something here today, right now? Hallelujah. Give it to me now. Give it to me now. So the father packed everything and gave it to him. Of course, 
the beast must lie against him. He had to come back begging. But you don't have to go, go back and beg after you have prospered. Is it not better to go little by little and let it last your lifetime than to do boom and you go down boom? That would not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. How does these things work? Or how do these things work? I will show you next Sunday. How to plan life and put it together little by little. You must also have a wedding that everybody's talking about. Why don't you put your life together what? Little by little. Can you, why must you do a birthday for your son? A one year old, but who doesn't even know what is happening? A five year old that doesn't know what is happening. You will put together everything you have labored for for one year to impress silly people. The deposit for your land, you have blown it on that one party. And you say God has not prospered you because you don't understand the principle of little by little. God bless and keep you. God is faithful to shine upon you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord do great things in your life. May the Lord multiply your efforts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Something is happening in your life. I'm going to give you the scripture for the month. That we're going to pray together for the month of May. Glory be to God forevermore. Because I was, I finished. And um, I was just praying this morning. I'm just taking my time to pray. And the Lord just brought something to my, just hit my spirit. He said, tell them Amen. that as they take that, those steps little by little, Amen. he said, when they need be, I will multiply their efforts. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? You just start your journey. Do you know, <laughs> like my friend, he was building, sir. He, when he laid, when she, uh, he laid found, his foundation, sorry, when he laid his foundation, I want to mention his thing. When he laid his foundation, that foundation was on that the same spot for about two and a half years. It's like nothing will happen. But it was a grad, even to lay that foundation, it was gradual. He laid it. It's like nothing was happening. Then all of a sudden, he decided to do something again. From that moment, he started. That never stopped until he finished. You know what God said? You know, why I brought that story up? I brought it up to say this. When the time comes for God to multiply your little effort, he will step in. You are not the one that will determine that. Just do what you are supposed to do little by little. Then when God decides to step in, because sometimes it comes to the point that God says you have compassed this mountain long enough. It's time to speed up. He will do it for you. May the Lord bring recovery, restoration over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the Lord bring restore, re recovery and restoration over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. The enemy will not laugh, laugh at you. In the name of Jesus Christ. All that was lost, God will restore. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yo, Makalia Barosto, Hey, 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 listen to me. The Lord said something to me just now. Your good name will be restored. I don't know who that is. You are being vilified and maligned. But the Lord said to me, your good name will be restored. The Lord will justify you. The Lord will prosper you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your good name will be restored. I, know what the, I don't know why the Lord said that to me. I don't know whether in the name of Jesus, may your good name be restored. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, so nobody will listen to me again. I've messed up. Family will. No, no, no. The Lord told me to tell you. Your good name will be restored. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, so nobody will ever trust me again. Nobody will ever believe. No, 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 no. The Lord said to me to tell you that your good name will be restored. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fikatala, bro. Commander Libra das Koreama, Bacalish to Vocusa, Pale Baraka Story Bishturia. The Lord asked me to tell you, specifically you, that if He restores the anointing, I don't know who you are, you know, we've never talked before. And if I'm lying, just tell everybody that this pastor is lying. Don't worry, I don't have ego. You know, don't worry yourself. I don't know you, but the Lord said something to me that if I restore the anointing, will you still prophesy to the nations? Will you still speak to the nations? 
Will you still sing for the nation? Sir? He said, we used to do it. There's just one anointing over me now. I don't know what it is. He asked me to tell you that the book is not closed. The book is not closed. You are the one that closed it. But in heaven, it's not closed. There's a volume of book that's written concerning you. For he said, my gift and my calling, they are without repentance. Father, we give you praise. I give you praise, my king. I bless you, my Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's round up. By, I want to give you the scripture for the months and we pray. Please, on Wednesday, come to church. Oh. You know, this was the first Saturday. We got, uh, it has passed. We didn't take our time to fast and pray. This one, we are going to fast and pray. We can't miss it. We are going to come. We will work on this scripture. Are you hearing me? And pray together in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, second uh, Kings chapter 7. I believe God with you for your children, Amen. for your household. Amen. Listen to me. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of you that have children abroad, may the power of God rest on every one of them. Amen. Anywhere they are, may the hand of God be evident over their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the presence of God be strong over their lives. The beast will not consume them. Ah, you didn't hear that. I said the beast will not consume them. I said, I said the beast will not consume them. In the name of Jesus Christ. The beast will not consume them. Glory be to God forevermore. Let's, let me read this as, as we go today. Okay, this is when Elijah prophesied that tomorrow there will be a border outside the city of Gates of Samaria, right? Now, go to verse 7. Remember... Remember those, let, let's read verse, verse 4, from verse 4. I'll read from verse 4 to 7. Remember those lepers? Remember those lepers? I mean, you know what happened to lepers, right? Feet cut off, all those teeth cut off, fingers cut off. You, lepers don't run. This is how lepers move. Little by little. Look at what it says. Look at, what, look at what these four lepers say. It says, if we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. If we sit here, we shall also die. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, <laughs> we, are, we shall live. And if they kill us, <laughs> we shall only die. Look at the next line. And they rose at one time at twilight in the evening to go to the camp of the Syrians. When they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. Guys, listen to me. You are the one that do permutation. Eh, eh, this challenge, that challenge, that challenge. Do we discover by the time you get that the challenge will not be there? Amen. Eh, before not for you to do this, you will say this one, this one, all next day, start moving. That little by little. By the time you get there, to your surprise, that challenge will not be there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at the next line. For the Lord had called the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of what? Of chariots. And the noise of, noise of horses. And the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Verse 7. Therefore they arose and fled at one time at twilight. It's not the same time they took off. That they, they began to move. The same time they heard the noise, God asked me to tell somebody here, once you begin that small move, 
God will amplify it. We know there are just four of them. We know they can even run fast. Yeah, God caused them to hear the noise of chariots, the noise of horses, and a great army. Tell five people, may the Lord multiply your efforts. In Jesus' name. Ma, may the Lord multiply your efforts, man. Amen. May the Lord multiply your effort. Man of God, may the Lord multiply your efforts in Jesus' name. May the Lord multiply your effort in Jesus' name. Sir, may the, may the Lord, Lord multiply your Amen. Amen, Daddy. May the Lord multiply your effort. Mommy, may the Lord multiply your effort, man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look, stop all this thing. Uh, I, I am an absentee father. I'm an absentee mother. Uh, if you are not there, the children will go wayward. All those things. No, I, listen to me. Yes, sir. If it's ordinary phone call you put across to them, yes, the Lord will multiply it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Don't let them terrify you anymore. Yes, yes, yes. There are people that grew up with their parents and they became wayward. Yes. Presence does not mean anything. Right. There is a greater presence. Yes. If it's ordinary email you send to them, may the Lord multiply your efforts. Amen. Amen. If it's once a year, the Lord gives opportunity to gather with, with them and share what with them. May the Lord God multiply your efforts. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are not afraid. Yes, yes, yes. Our God covers us. We are not afraid. Our God takes care of us. Takes care of our children. Perfect all that concerns us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord multiply your efforts. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You call them lepers. You know what God saw? God called them a great army. Chariots. Horses. Somebody is looking at me here today. Say, Pastor T, all I have is 5,000 naira. May the Lord multiply everything you have done. In the name of Jesus Christ. All I have is O-N-D. All I have is class 5. Who is talking about that here? We are talking about God, about God that multiplies. Multiplies a man's effort. May the Lord multiply your effort in the name of Jesus. May he multiply your effort in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. May the Lord multiply your effort, my brother. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Who told that you must have everything put together? Where is the God factor? The Bible says, and God caused them to hear. It's God. They are not, they are not even aware of what God was doing. The Bible said, the God, they are, it was to their surprise. They are not even aware of what God was doing. May the Lord surprise you. Are you hearing me? To your surprise, may great things happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor T, what are we believing God for for this month? We are believing God to multiply our efforts. He told me that he will multiply your efforts. You don't worry about the leprosy. Don't worry. Just take that small step. And see what God will do. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are not scared. We won't allow our natural limitations to stop us. We will not allow it. We will take that step. We will make that move. And trust the grace of God to multiply every effort in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 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 May the Almighty multiply your effort. May the Almighty multiply your effort. May the Almighty multiply your effort. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I remember that testimony I shared with you guys. I was watching it online the other day about my friend. I told her I would take some of you to his church. What he built. Olagudu knows the church because he was the structural engineer for that church. He said, Pastor Tim, can you give me? I said, I know a structural engineer. He will build a house that devil cannot put down. <laughs> but you'll be ready. He doesn't compromise on, he does not compromise on material. He does not. Beautiful, big, strong place. You know how much they started with? Olagunju wouldn't believe that. Where's Olagunju? How much they had? They started with 500,000 naira. 500,000 naira. 
Oh, sorry, I don't want to boast. Which I give. Go and look at the church. That church. Let me tell you something. They told me. I've told you before in church. He said the greatest giver. Don't take them there. Don't because of the things concerned there. You know. You know what he told. The, he told me. He said the greatest giver to this project is the is the imam of this area. He said he has begged. We don't announce it. Oh, don't tell it. The, the, <coughs> if you see what I'm talking about, he said we say we need this ayam. He said we don't talk to the imam. Will come and drop it. Not that he would tell the man, he would just break 500 bags of cement, 600 bags of cement. He said, the greatest giver to this project is the imam of this place. Of this area. That can only be God. May your effort, may God multiply it. So please, I share that testimony to let you know. God can use anybody to multiply your effort. You just take that step. Let them laugh at you. You are a leper. You cannot run. Look at you. You don't have a ticket. You don't have money. How much have you saved? Start! And see God overtake you. I commend you to God. I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We honor your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Are you happy you came to church this morning? Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah! Hallelujah.